for millennia, it is believed that our cosmic neighbors in the universe have sent messages for us to decode. From mystic structures to massive etchings carved into the surface of our planet, we have struggled to understand the symbols sent to us from other worlds. But now, for the first time in history, an alien message has been received and deciphered. This information is groundbreaking. This could be the holy ground you followed to. 32 years ago, two men made contact with an unknown craft that communicated a message from a world beyond our own. Tonight, we will reveal its meaning, and the way we look at UFO encounters will change. Everything that people thought they knew about UFOs for the last 70 years is probably wrong. Join us as we crack the alien code, and its secrets are unsealed. A global effort has begun. Secret files hidden from the public for decades, detailing every UFO account, are now available to the public. We are about to uncover the truth behind these classified documents. Find out what the government doesn't want you to know. Unsealed. Alien Files. Exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. No evidence of alien life has been more sought after than a message from another world. People have seen UFOs. People have even seen extraterrestrials. But to communicate with an alien, that would ultimately be the key to unlocking the secrets of life in the universe. But one historic incident stands above the rest when it comes to proof of such communication. The year is 1980. In the midst of the Cold War, the entire world is on edge. The possibility of nuclear annihilation sparked by conflict between America and the USSR is at an all-time high. This is December 1980, a period of extraordinary international tension. Ronald Reagan has been elected as president, and Margaret Thatcher is in power in the United Kingdom. This is a period where the Cold War is decidedly frosty, and indeed there's a danger that it might become pretty hot. In preparation for a counter-strike, US troops are stationed at Bentwaters Royal Air Force Base just outside the forest of Rendlesham in the UK. Around 3 a.m. on the night of December 26th, radar loses track of an unknown object in the woods outside the base. Soldiers on guard duty notice something strange high above the forest. These men saw unidentified lights in the forest from the gates of Bentwaters. Radar indicated it could potentially be a downed aircraft. Among the soldiers to witness these lights are Airman First Class John Burroughs and Staff Sergeant Jim Penniston. They quickly form a team and are dispatched to the woods for investigation. What they find after driving into the forest is not a downed aircraft. As I was getting out of the vehicle, it felt like there was static electricity in the air. Things felt abnormal. Um, both of us at that point kind of looked at each other and realized that maybe something was actually going on. Above the trees, the two men see the silhouette of a triangular-shaped craft lowering to the forest floor. The air around the object was electrified. It was like dancing on our skin and our clothes. At that point in time, I knew it was an aircraft crash. I knew I had an unknown object in front of me. Sergeant Penniston immediately reaches for his notebook to record the details of a craft that defies logic. His sketches show an object nine feet on each side and almost six feet tall, with mysterious symbols etched along the side of the craft. One of the things that sets Rendlesham Forest apart from almost every other UFO case you look at is this wasn't just lights in the sky. This was a landed UFO. John Burroughs and Jim Penniston got extremely close to this object. It, it had come down in a small clearing in a forest, and indeed Jim Penniston claims that he got so close to this thing, he was able to reach out and touch it. I took my hand and ran him over the bottom symbols all the way across. It felt like from going from the smoothness of the uh, metal to like feeling sandpaper on each of them. But then something happens that will change his life forever. Out of all the glyphs, there was one that was larger than all the other ones. And so I decided to go ahead and touch that one. 
when I touched that symbol, uh, I had an explosion of, of white light uh, where I couldn't see, I was blinded. And I uh, started seeing ones and zeros flashing. They were like inside my uh, mind's eye. The ones and zeros burn into his memory, leaving an imprint of an alien code. I think I was just plain terrified. Somehow, I was able to go ahead and pull my hand off, and it stopped. The craft started to move a little bit, and uh, it was gone in the blink of an eye. Next, the two men who witnessed the craft in Rendlesham Forest reveal a shocking secret about what else they experienced that night. And their hunt for the truth reveals chilling real-life recordings of one of the most shocking alien contacts of all time. It's coming this way. It is definitely coming this way. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. On the night of December 26th, 1980, Sergeant Jim Penniston and Airman First Class John Burroughs experienced a UFO encounter deep in the United Kingdom's Rendlesham Forest. Penniston is shaken by his contact with an alien craft and the vision it leaves behind. But while recounting the experience, a startling revelation is made. John Burroughs maintains a different memory of the event entirely. I do not remember seeing Jim walk around the craft. I do not remember touching the craft. What I clearly remember was we got close to something, and the next thing I know, it, was, it appeared to go up into the sky and then shoot out towards the coast. But the most unexpected difference the time on their synchronized watches differs after the incident by almost 45 minutes. Whatever we encountered affected our memory. And at one point, because of the static electricity or the, the, the whatever was in the air, it could have affected our memory and or could have affected what, we're, what we saw. When John Burroughs and Jim Penniston returned to base, it transpired that more time had elapsed than they realized. Moreover, there was discrepancy in their wristwatches. Time, it seemed, not only had run on, but had maybe run at different speeds for them. Now, this takes us to some quite extraordinary territory, but when you talk to both John and Jim, and indeed to people who looked at this case, some quite extraordinary theories are being bounced around, ideas of time travel, could the ship have caused their perception of time, or even time itself, to shift? Their search for an answer leads Burroughs back to the woods and uncovers evidence that must be heard to be believed. Unsealed case file, the Charles Halt recording. The following evening, John Burroughs meets with Deputy Base Commander Charles Halt to re-examine the site of the encounter. They surveyed the area of the alleged sighting and checked nearby trees for radiation. When I first met up with Colonel Hall, one of the things that came up was that he said everything that night that was going on, all the radio traffic was being recorded through the command post. Is there any rains on the tree you're taking samples from on the side facing the suspected landing site? Four clicks, Max. Up to four. Interesting, that's right, we're taking the sample now. Four. That's the strongest point on the tree? Yes, sir. Instead of just clicking, if it was detecting something, pegged all the way over on the right side of the, of the meter. But the course of the investigation changes suddenly when a soldier on Colonel Halt's team notices something especially unusual, a glowing light spotted in the distance. There it is. Hey, I see it too. What is it? We don't know, sir. So you have to try this one. Yeah, it's a strange, small red light. Looks to be on maybe a quarter to half mile, maybe further out. I'm gonna switch off. The light is gone now. It's approximately 120 degrees from the site. Is it back again? Yes, sir. There's no doubt that this is genuine, and it's quite extraordinary. You can hear the tension and the fear in these men's voices as the UFO approaches them. At one point on the tape, you can hear the UFO's coming closer. I saw a yellow tinge in it too. Weird. It, it, it appears to be maybe moving a little bit this way. It's, it's brighter than it has been. Yellow. It's coming this way. It is definitely coming this way. Pieces of it are shooting off. There is no doubt about it. This is weird. 
the object exploded into a bright white light and shot back out towards the coast. Colonel Holt has spoken about this, and he said, was this communication? Was this a warning? What was it? On January 13th, 1981, Colonel Holt writes a memorandum to the United Kingdom's Ministry of Defense about the incident. In it, he confirms that what Penniston and Burroughs encountered on the previous night was no figment of imagination, but a real phenomenon experienced by Holt and his team as well. Two crucial pieces of evidence to support the Rendlesham incident was the Halt memo and the tape recording. But what we found out years later was that there was another even more significant piece, and that was the code that Penniston received when he touched the craft. But in this point in time, he was still keeping the code a secret. I couldn't sleep. I was still having ones and zeros flashing. And uh, after I pulled that notebook back up to look at the original glyphs I drew, I started writing them all down. And uh, after I completed 16 pages, I felt great. But I wasn't going to report that because, uh, I mean, it sounds insane. So I just kept it quiet. In other words, when he touched this craft, there was a huge jolt and information somehow transferred to him. Now, he forgot about this. Maybe he, he just blocked it. Maybe he didn't realize it was important. But it was only 30 plus years afterwards that he perhaps realized he was sitting on something of the utmost significance. Coming up next, we reveal the meaning behind the code in Penniston's notebook and uncover the shocking identity of the beings who sent it to us. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. Retired U.S. Air Force Sergeant Jim Penniston has kept a secret from the world. 16 pages of zeros and ones he received in a vision communicated by an alien craft in the forest of Rendlesham. For 30 years, these pages remained hidden until a chance reunion with his partner, John Burroughs, in 2010. As we were going through the book, he came to some pages that had zeros and ones on it. I looked at it and I said, these are binary codes. Binary is important because it's the foundation of digital communication. In 1974, Carl Sagan and several other scientists broadcast a message at a frequency of 2,380 megahertz at a power of 1,000 kilowatts into deep space. When the Arecibo message was sent up to the heavens, at that time it was the most powerful message we've ever sent. The message was sent in a form of digital code that is composed of long strings of zeros and ones a type of communication known as binary code. The easiest way to understand binary code is to think of it as like Morse code. Morse code has dots and dashes, binary has ones and zeros. So you put eight ones or zeros together and you get a byte of data. When we decide to send a message to the heavens in hopes to communicate with an alien civilization, binary code was decided by scientists because it really is that universal language that if any intelligent race in the universe were to master science, binary code would be the easiest thing to decipher. So when we sent the Arecibo message to the heavens, we gave details about where we were in the universe, uh, what our human DNA was like, and some other details about who we are as humanity. If Penniston truly received an alien communication and we were able to decode it, I think that message in itself could potentially change humanity. Unsealed Case File, The Alien Code. In 2012, I was given six pages from Jim Penniston's notebook. They contained binary and I was asked to see if there was a message contained inside. Nick Siski was hired to take the first six pages of Penniston's 16-page code and determine if, in fact, they meant anything at all. So I was skeptical I'd find anything in these binary notebook pages, but I started typing the ones and zeros into my computer, running them through my translator, and I was shocked to find a short message, which read, Exploration of Humanity, what appeared to be latitude and longitude coordinates, continuous for planetary advance. When I saw the message, a chill ran down my spine. I was honestly not expecting to find anything in the binary. 
and here was what appeared to be a message that would come from aliens if they were trying to communicate with us. Exploration of humanity for planetary advance. The message could be instruction or perhaps even a warning. A possibility made only more intriguing by the numbers that appear within the code. It's the right number of digits, north and west, indicating uh, somewhere on planet Earth. And when plotted on a map, these coordinates fall on an unlikely location off the coast of Ireland, an island once known as High Brazil. High Brazil has sometimes been dubbed the Celtic Atlantis. It, it's a, a sort of lost land, a mythical country, as it were, that some believed was the site of an advanced civilization. According to legends, those who have seen High Brazil reported a land filled with an advanced and wealthy civilization whose architecture consisted of golden towers and majestic domes. Then suddenly in the late 1800s, the island literally disappeared from the map. But in the pages that follow, continued analysis has uncovered other coordinates from around the globe. In a binary code, it uh, clearly shows grid coordinates around the world. And the grid coordinates are located in the southwest United States, which is Sedona, Central America, South America, Greece, Egypt, and a location in China. Many have speculated that the message is pointing to these locations as the origin of alien ancestors on planet Earth. But there is more to this story than we've been led to believe. Many people believed that this binary code could be the smoking gun that blows open not just the Rendlesham Forest mystery, but the whole mystery of the UFO phenomenon itself. But to fully understand the message, we must answer the question, who sent it to the human race? And perhaps the most shocking revelation of the Rendlesham encounter is that Jim Penniston believes he has the answer. Why would a race that traveled thousands of light years play hide and seek with us, give us a binary message, and why is it in English? And why has the craft got markings like a US aircraft? There's what, thousands of questions like this. It doesn't point to alien. This is not about UFOs. Coming up next, Jim Penniston exposes the creatures behind the sighting in Rendlesham Forest with an answer that will shock the world. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. Within the 16 pages of binary code recorded by Jim Penniston in Rendlesham Forest, the most important detail may be Penniston's explanation of who gave it to him. This is not about UFOs. It doesn't point to alien. What I seen was a craft that was us from the future. Perhaps the alien code is actually a message from our own species. If Jim Penniston is correct, the true message of the code is an assurance that mankind will survive well into the centuries ahead and a shocking revelation that the history of UFOs on planet Earth may be a glimpse into our future. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. 